I need you all to join me in a little chant. We're going to start chanting, let it snow. All right? Can you join me? Let it snow. 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 Thank you. Let it snow. Hey. That's what we're talking about. So we're going to bring a little snow to Las Vegas. Um, and thank you for taking the time to take a seat and join me. My name's Craig Beals. I'm a science teacher in Montana. If you don't know where Montana is, it's a place full of mountains and snow. And I figured I should bring some snow down here to the desert. So I did. Now what I did, I just took a CO2 tank right back here. And then I took apart one of those pressure washers that you hose your car down with, a little braided line, a little copper tube on the inside. And really what it's going to do is draw the CO2 out of the bottom and it's going to push it up into the air and we're going to get a little snow. So if you catch a snowflake in your mouth, you can eat it. Are you ready? If you catch it in your hand, you can eat it as well. Okay, work with me here. We're going to see in three, two, I'm not sure if this is really that safe. So you people in the front, I mean, thank you for being brave. You'll be all right. You ready? In three, two, one. <laughs> Catch it. <laughs> That's much better, huh? It's getting kind of hot in here. You feel it? And it's getting kind of loud. Now watch, here's snow. Little snow for you. So there's our CO2 cannon. But now I'm a chemistry teacher, right? So I'm bringing the chemistry lab to you today. But they told me when I came to Las Vegas that I couldn't use anything hot and I couldn't use any fire. So instead, we're going to bring out the liquid nitrogen right after I tell you a little bit about myself. <laughs> Welcome back to season two of Invisible Labs. Thank you. Hydrogen. I need that in my classroom. Hot air balloon. Simple science, right guys? <laughs> yeah. So we're taking this FLIR technology and using it in a whole different way really to educate young people and inspire them with infrared technology. If you're not familiar with FLIR, what it does, it sees heat, okay? It sees thermal, which, there we go. You can see yourself up there on the big thermal selfie screen. And so, one of the best ways to inspire people, especially my high school students, is with a little liquid nitrogen to catch their attention. So liquid nitrogen is negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. How many degrees Celsius? All right, that's what the same thing my students say. They don't know. About 100, negative 190 degrees Celsius, okay? So that'll be on the final at the end of the class today. There will be a quiz. If you don't pass it, it's all right. So here we go, a little liquid nitrogen. Um, apparently, they'll just sell this stuff to anybody because they sell it to me all the time, which doesn't seem like a great idea. I tell my students, trust me, I'm a science teacher. And any science teacher that tells you that don't listen. Now, the other thing is, I'm from Montana, right? Montana is up by Yellowstone National Park. Hey, hey give it up. Where, where from? Kalispell. Okay, so when people think of Montana, this really beautiful area, they think of where this guy's from, Kalispell. I'm from Billings. We're not, we're, we're a wonderful town, I'll just tell you that much. Um, but I thought I would bring a little bit of Yellowstone Park to Las Vegas with me, like Old Faithful Geyser. Okay, now hopefully you're familiar with Old Faithful Geyser. Old Faithful Geyser is a big geyser that shoots boiling water up into the sky. But since I didn't have any boiling water, I have boiling liquid nitrogen. Now the liquid nitrogen is turning immediately from a liquid into a gas, into nitrogen gas. So, theoretically speaking, if I take a glass tube right out of the chemistry lab, and I put it down in the liquid, it's got nowhere to go but that way, right? Or right back at my face, one or the other. Here we go. So Old Faithful in Las Vegas. Let's do this. Oh, yeah, huh? Hey, it's nice and cool up here, people. So look, now it's, it cooled the air down so much that it all collapsed. So if I move it over here where the air isn't quite as cooled down, can you feel that? If it hits you in the eyeballs, close them quickly. 
So there we go. We're raining liquid nitrogen, and we've got some old faithful. Now, that's all fun and fine and dandy, and that looks good in my classroom. But in Las Vegas, we got to go bigger, right? Go big or go home because this is Las Vegas. So instead of a little bottle, I brought this bottle. That's a nice big carboy. That's for brewing beer. Unfortunately, we won't be doing any of that right now. Instead, we're going to fill this thing up. And remember, it's going from a liquid into a gas. And I'm filling the little carboy up. You know what they say, if a little is good, more is better. Yeah, very good. So if a little is good, more is better. Now, I don't have a glass tube for this because I don't really need one. What I need to do is get the liquid nitrogen to heat up even faster. But I wasn't allowed to bring any fire. So the way I'm going to do that is with hot water. When hot water and the liquid nitrogen interact, it's going to turn into a vapor very quickly. There's my glove. And that's my daughter's water bottle from her sports team. Don't tell her I stole that and brought it here. We just got liquid nitrogen in there. I'm going to put hot water in. Hopefully, this is bigger and better than the last one. Here we go. Oh, jeez. Yeah, look at that, huh? Now, I'll shake it up a little bit. Look at that. Isn't that nice front row, huh? What do you think? Does that feel better than the last one? I got some more water in here. Get it in there. Can you feel it? Feel it. No? Okay. So we'll let that one gas out. And I'm going to get another experiment ready for you while you look at the heat. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Try one more time. you overcome friction. We've done it so many different ways. We've used an ice block. We've used skis. But just sheer good old American horsepower is about the coolest way to overcome friction. Look at this! So we have effectively ripped all of the tread off of that poor Buick. But this is the fastest thermal imaging camera in the world. And this is what we had trained at the tires when Reggie was spinning out and burning rubber. Smells like America. Oh, nice! So when I teamed up with FLIR, the goal was really to remind young people that science can be fun. Because so many of us sat in our science classes when we were going through school, and somebody stood up there and just talked about science, or we read it out of the book. And to me, that's not how science should be. You should be able to see it, and feel it, and hear it, and all of those things. And FLIR, the technology, allows us to see science in a way like I had never seen it before. So it's been some, we've seen some really interesting things, hence the 800 horsepower 1950 Buick that was burning up the parking lot at the school. I mean, if that doesn't get kids excited about science and technology, uh, I don't know what does. Now, um, I've got some more liquid nitrogen. And what I want to do for you is make a little balloon go pop. But... I want to do it using the liquid nitrogen. One of the cool things about this technology is because it's not seeing normal visible light, it's seeing infrared, it can see through things. Like, not through your clothes, but it can see through other things. Look, I got splattered with liquid nitrogen. You see those dots on me? That's pretty cool. At least I think it is. So, I'm going to show you how this can see through certain types of material. A little more liquid nitrogen going in the bottle. Who remembers the temperature of liquid nitrogen? Pop quiz. Negative 190 Celsius. Very good. So in Fahrenheit? Negative 320. Very good. Outstanding. I mean, that's cold. Like, that's, that's colder than it is on most days in Montana where I come from. 
although sometimes it feels like it gets that cold. I've got a balloon, just a regular balloon, folks, on the end of a piece of plastic tubing. Okay, let me put this on here. Now, remember, this is turning from a liquid into a gas, so it's going to start to fill up that balloon. You, you're wise to be concerned. <laughs> He's like, wait, wait a minute. What's going on here? So, I mean, we could sit here for quite a while and watch this and just sort of talk about our feelings, but I think instead we should just tip it upside down and fill it up with liquid nitrogen, because why not? Here we go. Okay, okay. Now, it's filled up with the liquid nitrogen, and I don't, I mean, it's going to continue to expand. Here's what I want you to be able to see. It, yes, be, be concerned. It's getting, holy cow. <laughs> That was fantastic. Okay, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe we don't need to do it again, but I didn't get to see it in there, and plus, turns out I've got a little more of this. So one more time. Let's see if we can see through the balloon. Did you guys get cooled down in the front row a little bit? Yeah. It feels good. It feels real good. Everybody's going to get a chance to play with the liquid nitrogen in just a little bit. So if you survive chemistry class today, you get to play along. I don't get to have all the fun all the time, um, but you got to survive class. Okay, this is just a regular balloon, remember? Liquid nitrogen, it's filling up with nitrogen, air, N2, as it goes from a liquid into a gas. And I'm going to tip it upside down. We're going to fill it up with nitrogen again, liquid nitrogen. There you go. Okay, that's sometimes I wonder if these are good ideas or not, but... Oh, there it goes again. I didn't even get to look through it. But hopefully you got to see through it. So there we go. We got exploding balloons all by the power of liquid nitrogen. And again, I've got one more thing for you where you're going to get to play along. So stick with me while I set it up after hydrogen this. Hydrogen is number one on the periodic table. It's the most abundant gas and abundant element in the universe. You know what they say, if a little is good, more is better. Maybe a little too much there. And three. Two, one. That was good. You see it? Hydrogen. Now, that's why we don't use hydrogen at the little kids' birthday parties. Now, what's happening is we just made water there, okay? The hydrogen went, it blew up, but hydrogen itself can't combust. It has to have oxygen to combust. So you could probably see it stretching out from the middle there. What it's looking for is oxygen. And when hydrogen combines with oxygen, it makes H2O. H2O is water. Now, I wonder what would happen if we gave a little bit of oxygen to the inside of the balloon so the hydrogen didn't have to spread out and grab oxygen from around here. Well, I think, theoretically, then it wouldn't have to flare out as far and the reaction might happen a little faster. And quite frankly, this one scares me. Bad idea? Let's find out. All clear in three, two, one. Brilliant. <laughs> That's fantastic. Nice. That's my real classroom, and I do that with my students in the class, and it lifts the ceiling tiles up and rearranges them. Now, the people that teach around me, they just sort of go with it at this point, but I, got to, I did that at an elementary school. I get to travel around a lot and show kids how, how fun science should be. I did that at ele elementary school, and the boom was big enough that two of the kids had to get up and leave the auditorium because they had gone potty in their pants, it was so loud. So this is why they won't let me bring that here. I had to use the other balloon instead. Now I said, you guys get to play along because I shouldn't get to have all the fun. So I'm going to tell you a story that I tell my students. Back before I was a teacher, fresh out of college, I was having trouble finding a job. But I did find a job as a dragon trainer. And um, dragon trainers are not in high demand. And so it was pretty easy to get that job. And what I found out in my time of dragon training was that Part of the job was to give the dragons cereal every morning for their breakfast, right? Well, dragons are heating up because of the flames that shoot out of their face because, after all, they're dragons, right? So we got to cool them down every morning 
which is hence the liquid nitrogen. So in goes a little liquid nitrogen into the bowl. Oh, you got to be careful with this stuff, don't you? A little liquid nitrogen into the bowl. And then I know you probably wouldn't believe it, but dragons, their favorite thing for cereal? Teddy Grahams. I mean, who doesn't love Teddy Grahams? It's like a well-balanced breakfast. It's sugar, carbohydrates, and probably more sugar. But the nice thing about them is they have little air gaps. They look like little teddy bears if you haven't had them before. They're graham crackery and honey flavored and wonderful. So right now those graham crackers or those teddy grams are sitting in there and all the little pores in the graham crackers are filling up with liquid nitrogen. So maybe you didn't know this, but the reason dragons breathe smoke out of their faces is not because of the fire, because of the breakfast that we give them. But dragon training didn't pay well, so I had to get a teaching job to supplement my income. <laughs> and here I am. Look, at here we go. You ready? Dragon cereal. Oh, is that safe? Oh, it's frozen in my cheek. Look at that. One more time. Here we go. I, I need a couple of volunteers. Are you brave? Are you brave? Come on up. I need a couple of volunteers. I'm just going to have you stand right here on the, whatever that's called, the stage. And I've got some cups. What I want you to do is I want you to chew up these Teddy Grahams. Chew them up very quickly. Now, there's a couple rules for these folks because it's negative 320 degrees, right? So chew it up very quickly. Rule number two is this, it's a gas. So when you chew it up, if you swallow it before it's all turned to a gas, it's gonna turn to a gas in your belly. And we know where gas in your belly has to go. One of two places. And the thing is, you're not gonna have any friends left at CES. Oh yeah, so if you guys, if you guys wander over there, that camera's live and chew those up. It's right over there, you can see that big eyeball just Take it down the hatch and chew it up, and let's see what you get. Oh, look at the brave souls. They're like, like baby dragons. Now, here's the thing. I want all of you to have the chance to be baby dragons and get the chance to chew on liquid nitrogen and get the chance to experience science. Thank you for being brave. We've got some prizes for you coming up. And we've got prizes for everybody. So what we're going to do is I'm going to mix up a whole bunch of cereal and start filling up the little Dixie cups with dragon cereal. We're going to let you file through here. You remember the rules, right? Chew it up quickly, otherwise it's going to freeze to the inside. Oh, sorry. It's going to freeze, freeze to the inside of your face. And don't swallow it until the gas is gone. If, if you're brave enough to eat the dragon cereal and you make your way this direction, they're going to get a, one of these fantastic Invisible Labs t-shirts. And every time you wear it, maybe you can think about you know high school science education and Someday you can go back into the classroom and maybe inspire kids to go into technology and to go into science. And I appreciate you sitting through class today. Again, if you're brave enough, after the freebies, like the real freebies, we're going to give away some FLIR gear while I make the cereal. So thank you.